very good afternoon. Welcome at the Handelsbeurs in Antwerp. For those of you who haven't been to Fashion Talks before, it is still the most relevant conference in the fashion industry. It resulted in a plan of action, a vision on how we can support and fortify the Antwerp fashion industry in the long term. The city therefore foresaw a budget of 10 million euros to back it. First of all, we want to look after young designers even better. The Antwerp Fashion Department ranks internationally among the best, which makes young graduates very well trained in creativity. Secondly, there is a need for skilled workers such as pattern makers. This is why we will support the Flemish Public Employment Agency, the VDAB, in, for example, organizing courses in pattern making for both employed and unemployed citizens. And last but not least, we believe that Antwerp should play a role in making the clothing industry more planet-friendly. But if our plan succeeds, if we can keep our creative spirit and individuality going, Antwerp will play in the big leagues of fashion for generations. I try to tell you and to let you know that it is the ambition of Antwerp to be a home to fashion for many years to come. A very powerful message from Claire Press. Good morning, Antwerp. I'm Claire Press, presenter of the Wardrobe Crisis podcast. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? We can't predict the future, but we can decide who we want to be and what we want to stand for. He's come all the way from Canada to give us his insights on the retail industry. So please put your hands together for Doug Stevens. This is what consumers are looking for. Knowledge is no longer good enough. In fact, most consumers believe they have more knowledge than the sales associates that are working in stores. They want expertise, so what's the difference? Well, expertise means I didn't just read about this product in a manual, I wear it, or I use it, or it's one of the things that I buy all the time. People want to talk to people who have experience with those products. A round of applause for Bertoni da Silva. Yeah, with time, yes, yes, definitely. And so I would like to see more brands like mine or more streetwear brands coming In the from, from, from Belgium, you know. Good afternoon. I feel very honored to be invited. Creativity is a result of a healthy culture. Fashion in cyberspace, if that doesn't sound interesting, then I don't know what does. She was actually a student here at the Antwerp Fashion Department. She's made quite the career. I'm talking about Shaylee Harrison. The old ways of selling and creating do not apply the same way in this space. of always going further and further and further. I mean, for me, the, this relationship with the people that actually make the stuff that we design is so important because in the whole region, Western Europe had uh, a gigantic knowledge and heritage and, 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 and such a wealth that's, that's really going away. And I think if we could reclaim some of our pride in that and make young people want to be in that, in that field again without making it big factories, make it artisan, driven, proud, genuine things, then I think that, that these things could go in the same direction together. Please welcome the CEO, the big boss of Flanders DC, Pascal Kolf. The pandemic also had one positive impact. It made us think about our future. Using your creativity to change how you do business is as important as using your creativity in your collections. The fashion industry has to become more future-proof and is working on it, which is a positive. You are working on it 
during this crisis. And for this, I really need to thank you. As Flanders DC, we want to support you with these challenges. It is time for the final talk. Peter Mulier. Peter Mulier. Oh, you can uh, already applaud that name just by saying it. I think, I think that says it all, really. He is now the creative director of Alaya. It made me think, like, um, what is what is my true job as as the first creative director after him? Um, is it um, I translate it immediately in, in, into my own hand and into my own vision, uh, or I, I, I look at it as I said before, like a uh, a body of work, a, a, like an artwork, and I take care of it the way he did. So that for me was was the was, was the basic concept and was my job there just. Mm keep it on the same level as, as uh, at my best as he did. And number two is, how can you translate um, 45 years into uh, simple concepts and how you, can you translate these simple concepts to people who are not acquainted with Alaya or who only know Alaya for, from pictures? Um, so basically, th that's it. Mm. I, I, I see my job as taking care of, 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 uh, of the house. At Calvin Klein, I got disgusted by the amount of product we had to literally vomit. Yeah. Constantly, 16 times a year, 16 collections a year. And at one point you start asking, but who buys all this? And that's the beauty of Alaya. Mm -hmm. I make a dress and I know for who it is. And, and even that is a new way of, 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 of working. <laughs>